Hello and welcome to episode 174 of NOLA Time. My name is Obed Velez and with me is the most interesting man in the world, Joel Young. What's good, no low time? Obed, it's a pleasure to be with you, my friend. Good to be here, sir. I see that you're getting paid with all your gear. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, this is, I mean, then again, this is also showing some uh, some diversification. I feel like I always have a, uh, okay. I got a lot of Marvel stuff up here. So. Yeah, there's a, nice there's a BVS. DC, DC. Yeah, there's, there's BVS back there. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, you're, you're good, you're good, you're good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're recording, guys. We're real. We're live. We're live. We're recording. We are. Uh, we're talking over here about all the, the the checks that we're cashing. Yeah, right. I wish. Hey, I what's up, man? How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired. I will start off with saying that, I but I'm not too tired. tired. I'm not too tired to talk about uh, a very special, special show uh, movie. Rather, it's a movie. Um, but uh, we'll begin into that in a little at least bit. The, but... At least the first half of it. This is a marathon. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I know, dude. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, no, man, I'm doing pretty good. Um, didn't have anything crazy go on. Your what's up is going to be a lot cooler than mine. Um, but, you know, I, I got to jump in and play a little more uh, Battlefront 2, dude. I'm still going back to it. Um, cool. It's I haven't a played fun, it in a while. It's a fun one just to jump and do some quick matches online. Um, I still struggle with – I don't know about you, but, like, I still struggle with the uh, – with all the, the aerial, like, warfare stuff, like, you know, in the, the ships. Um, it's not my favorite. <sighs> yeah, I never, I never got really into it, man. I, I like was, they fixed it, but it's not great. Yeah, I mean, I'm most more of a of a a blast kind of guy, you know, team deathmatch. That was my thing. Okay. Um, that's most of the most of everything that I played was either that or conquest or galactic conquest. But I never got into like the space battles because it just I found the controls to be just weird. And I just got yeah. into a ship and got blown up the second I, I, I spawned. And, and it, it just wasn't for me. Uh, so it didn't click. It never really clicked with me. And especially that people have been playing it now. for It's been out for so long. People are, are graded. And I seem like a noob when I come in. So here I am. Hey, you know, go destroy this, you know, bridge or whatever it is. And I'm heading straight to the bridge. And somebody's right behind you just waiting to, waiting to light you up, you know. Yeah. You got you to know the maps. Yeah, yeah, you got on the maps, so, especially like, like I really like the the that Naboo uh, Galactic Conquest mm -hmm. map is probably my favorite. I really despise like Kashyyyk. I didn't like it. Um, there was another one. Uh, I didn't like Kashyyyk. There was one that usually comes up too with uh with that and Naboo. Oh, man, I, I can't remember what it was. Um, but yeah, those like the Naboo one I really liked. Uh, and then on on blast, I I I think the my least favorite was probably Geonosis. I never liked that map. Uh, I just not that I couldn't get around it, right? Because I can get around it, but I just couldn't find uh, like like a good rhythm to that map for some reason. It was weird. Yeah. No, I hear you. I mean, it's the maps make a difference. Um, yeah. You know what I've been thinking though is like I want to go back and play now Jedi Fallen Order, like run through it again, but on the PS5 oh, with upgraded. The, yeah, with a new set. 60 with the new frames sense. probably will make yeah. a nice difference. Oh yeah, because that game was choppy the, yeah. on PS4 and regular PS4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that that game is probably worth a, a, a revisit. Yeah. I may, I may. I, I still had a great time, yeah. but I feel like it would improve my my overall experience. I think so. Yeah, I'll, I'll I may give it a try and see what's all yeah. what's that all about. Um, yeah, man. Cool. Anything else? That's it. No, nah, that's all I got, dude. I Bro, mean, obviously, slow it weekend. ties right in. Yeah, slow weekend, man. Slow <laughs> weekend. Yeah. Um, I well, I took some days off of work this week, um, uh, just so I can spend time with my family. And we ended up going to Universal Studios yesterday. Hadn't been to Universal Studios since like 2009, probably. So it's yeah. been a it's been a minute. Um. And it was good. So the park basically closed that capacity at like 1230 yesterday. Um, I think the most we waited for a ride was about an hour. Okay. So it was good. Um, I think they're really... Okay, so I'm going to compare it to Disney because I went to Disney back in November to Hollywood Studios. So I'm going to compare my experience with uh, mm -hmm. both parks being that they're both actually comparable like direct competitors right it's true um so 
and meaning more than than Universal versus Disney being that they're both the studio park. Right. So um D- Disney has to queue stuff and uh the and the ride flow done, like down to a T. Like you there's not you know they 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 are managing that portion of it like really really well. Um I think that Universal is going the extra mile and keeping you safe because they're ev- before you get into the actual like uh whether it be like the direct ride itself or it's say an enclosed room and then you go to the ride they dispense uh you have to uh take hand sanitizer wow they make you say so you know they they do go the extra mile which disney do not uh when even your daughter who's young like they make everybody do it wow Yep. yep that's interesting yeah so they they are going the extra mile uh that being said um they they're keeping everyone really safe during the rides as well. Um, like if it's a, if it's a a cart that would fit multiple people, they'll just leave your family there. You know, it's it's like to give an example, man. Best example I can give you: we went to the Simpsons ride, right? And uh, I told my daughter, it's like, well, it's I was like 120 minutes, 125 minute wait based on the sign. And I told my daughter, it's like, listen, you know. It's a lot of weight. You get antsy. Let's go do something else. No, I want to do this one. Okay, let's let's do it. Two hour wait. Let's go. See, <laughs> nice. We ended up waiting about about an hour. Okay. So it was not even close to like a two hour wait. I think they're really like overestimating the wait time. Yeah. They're just giving you a, a rough and in, in, in my rough estimate, I mean like really rough estimate uh, on how how long you're gonna take. Uh, Green Gods was another, another example. It was an eighty-minute wait. We ended up waiting about forty, about fifty minutes, probably. Wow. So, so they're really overestimating that. Uh, we ended up doing everything. I have a funny story though. Uh, everything except the mummy and um, the Rip Ride Rocket, because my daughter was too young to do okay. those. Um, yeah. And I did miss the the newborn like stunt show they have. Okay. I'm not really, I'm not really into shows. Um, that used to be a thing that I that I was into when I used to come in as a tourist, right? Uh, but uh, that's like I'm, I don't want to spend time like at a theater and watch. It probably cool, right? Um, I think the last show that I really enjoyed was the uh, the stunt spectacular at the Hollywood Studios uh, with the uh, where they had the cars, right? That was awesome. So that was a great show, and I really enjoyed it. So, uh, but other than that, like I'm not gonna go out of my way to to go to a show at a theme park. Um, Green Cots was really good. That that ride was legit. It's my favorite ride at the whole park, dude. Yeah, it was really really good. Uh, the queue was phenomenal. Like dude, when you go in into oh, yeah. like the lobby Thanks. and going in down to the vault, it was great, man. Um, really immersive. Like I was impressed. I was like, man, I'm impressed. Like this guy's like really went the extra mile and 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 you know crafted this thing really well. I'm I was thoroughly impressed with it. The ride was really good, uh, so yeah, it gets it gets a it gets an A from me. Um, tr- I texted you because I, we went to the Transformers ride was the first ride when we got there because the line the wait was like fifteen minutes and we ended up waiting about fifteen minutes. Uh, I I I liked it a lot because I'm a huge Transformers nerd, as you can good. see. Because I went out of the queue and I was like, I gotta have that hat. I like it. I really like it. So so um. I, I liked, you know, again, it was very similar to the Green Gods ride. Um, it's like, it's a little rougher than the Spider-Man ride. It's like in between Green Gods mm-hmm. and Spider-Man, Transformers fits right in right in the middle between those two. I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, nothing bad to say about it. Uh, you know, again, I texted you. I told you it's like this is better than half of the Bay movies, actually. The 3D is really good, though. It like, is. It's when, really like, when good. Pro- like, not no spoilers, people, but Prime gets up in your face a few times and you're like, yeah. Oh, this is a Megatron. Megatron starts glowing at you and it looks really good. And yeah, you know, the, the sound system's really good. Yeah. Legit, yeah. man. It, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So we, that's basically, Oh, and then, <laughs> and then we went to the fast and the furious, right? We ended up waiting like 45 uh, minutes to 50 minutes for uh, that thing, bro. That's, that, 
That was a huge wet fart, bro. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> I told it's funny because my parents were with us, and I told my mom, "It's like I have I have a feeling that this is gonna be the the, the flabbiest ride ever. It's better than earthquake, like right because it's yeah. more modern. Like, yeah, because earthquake was the one that was in that same studio yeah. before, and that's the one it's replacing. But <laughs> it was such a oh. <laughs> And I'm just like ride or die at the uh, end, bro. No, the ride or not, no. Nah. When when freaking Vin, yeah. Vin Diesel and and uh, and Michelle Rodriguez came out of the elevator with that stupid truck, and they go it was like, they're they're like clearly freaking reading a cue card, and it's like, yes, you will ride with us, cause to us you're like family, right. Write it, yeah, yeah. It's come, like, come on, man. It was an bro. Oscar award-winning performance. Are you kidding me, bro? And, know, and Michelle, like, they were all super stiff. Like the Rock's the Rock, right? Oh yeah. He plays himself. It's like the Rock as himself Rock in every movie. Rock. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. So anytime the Rock shows up, it's fine. But, but, bro. And then Vin, Di- no, it's no spoil a spoiler alert for this ride. This is the. The, the foofiest ride ever. It's so dumb. And 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 you go through like this uh projection tunnel, which is pretty cool, right? The, yes. the have this whole like tunnel uh and it's a projection and they have wind coming at you and you feel like you're going fast. You haven't done Kong yet, right? I have not, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They Kong takes a similar tech but way better. Okay. So <laughs> So this is like this thing, and then Vin Diesel just grabs onto a helicopter, and like, is it? Did he punch the helicopter? I don't know. There was so much crap <laughs> happening at the same time, and it's like, I, I, it's like, uh, d- d- dude, I was so confused. It was like sensory overload. I was like, did he just punch the other that that helicopter? I don't know what's going on, bro. And then it was so stupid. It was the cue was the best part because I was nerding out right. It's oh, like yeah, that was that yeah. the uh, the there was that blue focus and not not focus the uh, Ford Escort and and the uh, and the STI from uh, from Fast Forward. It's like that, and as so I was geeking out, I was like, oh yeah, Supra engine or this thing. Oh, this is a little cooler. And like I was like, you know, freaking, you know, geeking out with like car parts yeah. and all that stuff. And that was all cool, right? Um, but then the ride was like, what the heck, bro? Um, we went into Men in Black. I was like, all right, let's do Men in Black last, and we'll go. We we missed Shrek because it was like a two-hour wait based on the yeah. thing. Uh, we'll, we'll do Men in Black first. Bro, the ride broke. Like, legit, Aww. legit broke in the middle of it. Like, they have to Aww. take us out. And they gave us a, a an express pass, and we and we went to Shrek. I was like, that's the only thing we're missing? Let's go. So wow. we went We went to the, like, the Shrek thing uh I've seen it a billion times. It's on like the Blu-rays and stuff. But uh, my daughter it was the first her first time at Universal as well. So uh, yeah, we ended up doing that, and then we went out. Uh, but yeah, really, uh, really fun day. Um, weather was very nice. It was it was warm, but it wasn't humid, so it was perfect. Uh, yeah, like I said, the crowds, like they they really they closed out at like noon, bro, and the wow. crowds were really good. You can walk around. I really didn't get a lot of pictures because we, like, we were like rushing it. Um, did you do Jimmy Fallon at all? Oh, you know what? We did not do that. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, That's we fun. missed that one. Yeah, um, and uh, you know the food ordering and whatnot was a little bit confusing. So Disney's doing yeah. that better, um, but you know at the same time it's it, it is what it is for now, right? I know that eventually we'll get to the point where, uh, you know, things can go back to normal. Um, yeah, other than that, didn't watch anything of note other than, than Justice League. We'll talk about it in a minute. Played a little bit more Spidey. Finished Zelda last weekend. Age of Calamity. Very good. Very good. Very good. Uh, if you if you like Breath of the Wild, I highly recommend you play that game. I did get, get one thing, Joel. Um, I've been looking around for this book for a while. Uh, and I finally saw it on sale on Amazon, and it's the game console. Ah, nice, um, nice. Yeah, by uh, Evan Amos, and this is basically a photography book. So it covers everything from the Odyssey to the Switch. Oh, cool. Um, and if you go in, right, and uh, say, for example, you look at the NES, 
uh, and it, it will have like a picture of the NES, and it will have oh, breakdowns awesome. of the hardware, which I'm a huge geek for. Uh, and it has everything. Like it has all the Sega consoles, all the uh, Nintendo consoles. Like I said, up up until the Switch. Uh, oh, oh, precious baby, right there, Sega Master System. So I really, uh, yeah, really loving this book, man. Uh, I've only read a few pages because I've been busy. Um, but man, found found it on Amazon hardcover for seventeen bucks on sale. That's so awesome, dude! It's a really good deal, um, and I, I I really like it. It looks really good. And Joel, I don't know, man. I uh, I kind of enjoy the uh, the yellow and black there. I don't know, man. I uh, uh good choices. May, maybe uh, maybe uh, maybe we're we're due for a refresh here, sir. Yellow black uh, is a good choice, man. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. A little Batman esque. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Black yeah. and yellow. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> neither of us are from it's <laughs> not another sure. one exactly <laughs> we, like, we don't discriminate sure yeah sure <laughs> why not it's like yeah i mean <laughs> as long as it's not dolphins colors i'm good oh, <laughs> oh man we lost listeners if we if we had some it goes miami oh uh, there's yeah, yeah there's <laughs> south florida sorry guys r.i.p south florida uh <laughs> um joe let's talk about the first three parts of justice league because yes. uh, that's what we watched um very good i i am i am liking it very bro uh, honestly that's it was two hours it, it was an hour and 51 minutes because i count it exactly where where i left it and it felt like an hour it felt like an hour like i, I would have watched the whole thing bro I would have watched the whole thing because I was really engaged and and that was that's a <laughs> dude. Okay, I teared up twice. I teared up twice, man. Um, and it, it's funny because one of the scenes is it's in the trailers. Um, that scene with Wonder Woman and the and when the museum bank wherever they are. A billion times better, bro. Wow. Dude. Yeah. Dude. Dude. So did the Gal Gadot do, do any reshoots or no? For yes, for this version. She did. She, she did? came back. She came back? Okay. Okay. Um that scene way, way, way better than uh than what we got on, on the on the Whedon cut. Tear up number one, um, when when everything's done, right? What she's done, and the girl goes like, "Can I can I be like you?" And I was like, mm, "And it's just she, you can be whatever you want." I was like, "Such a wholesome moment, bro." Why would Whedon cut that? I wasn't there. Yeah, that's what that's, that's what, what I think of. That's what I'm asking. That's why I'm asking. If it is there, he cut that. It's unforgivable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's it's unforget. Sense, it's yeah. It's a cinema <laughs> sin. A it's a cinema <laughs> sin right there. That's a strike, dude. You cannot. You can. That is. That is definitely a cinema sin. I. I. I really. I was like, yeah. Got me. Got me. Good. Cool. Okay. Um. We we actually got a Snyder intro in this movie, yeah. which which we didn't get on the other one. Which like basically it's like a slow mo intro with like the cast and the title and all this stuff happening all that's good um i think the interactions between uh bruce wayne and arthur were much better uh they they didn't they like because their interactions and in, in the other movie was were like kind of like playful yeah. and like they didn't like it didn't fit right there was something yeah. wrong um the music too was a little weird. Remember? Yeah. The music changed completely. Oh, the music the is so good in this one. Completely so it. much better. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think their interactions were were much better. Uh, there there's some scenes right like the like my wife was watching it with me because uh, she enjoyed the other Justice League, and she's like, it's like when we got to like the Themyscira part. Uh, oh, my wife my, oh, oh, oh. my wife was like. It's kind of like the same. I noticed that it's a little bit different, but but it's like they're still talking about the mother boxes and whatnot. It's like it's like, but Steppenwolf's dialogue is completely different. 
It's like it's completely different. It's like he's not like mother man. Like it's it's something completely different. It's so much better. Uh, but that scene, like the retouches that they did de- that they did for the for the fighting and all that, and uh, my daughter's impression was like, "This looks like an old movie because it's like gray." It's just like thanks, kid. In the box, probably. It pro- <laughs> yeah, that probably threw her off. It didn't really bother me. Uh, my wife didn't yeah. say anything about it, so she probably didn't even notice. Um, but she said it's like I know, like because colors are really subdued. This movie's almost black and white, honestly. Uh, honestly, it, I look I'm, forward to the black and white version. It looks good. It looks good, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the other scene that made me tear up was the Barry Allen scene when it, when he when uh, when he saved uh, um, when he saved Iris. So let me let me let me hydrate here real quick, Chris. Okay, water brought to you by water <clears throat> brought to you by H two O. Um, bro, like the when when it hit. When the scene hit, right when the slow mo part hit, and the music kicks in, it's like it's sublime. It's like, man, and it's like there's like I've seen the scene, right? But it's like the part when when he just like like stands in front of her, and she's just flying off the car, and 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 the slow mo, and and he like like. Like he touches her the hair. Dog. He grabs the hot dog. And I, I, dude, when I when when he grabbed the hot dog, I was like, oh, he's gonna do something with the dogs in the pet shop with this thing. I was like, I kind of like put it together, right? It's super silly because he's like smiles and he puts it in his pocket. It's stupid. I was like, I know that he's gonna do something with it. Um, but the, when he looks at her and and you know he like basically moves her arm so to move her out of the way, bro. So like everything was in that scene was so perfect perfect it was and i was like and i was moved i was like because it was like not the scene right not what was going on it was the the visual experience actually made me had a, a, a an emotional reaction to it um which is i, I want to say the contrary to to dr strange um which is all a, a visual treat right but like the visuals don't they, they, they really don't do anything for me but in this the, i think the visuals in this scenes like specifically right there was no dialogue it was all visual and and it hit me bro it was like it made me tear up i was like it this is one of the best scenes in like movie history honestly like it sounds stupid, right? It was like because he grabs a hot dog in the middle of the sequence. It's really just ridiculous, but it, it just was so well implemented, and yeah, man, I'm I'm all, I, I I'm I'm 100. I'm in, bro. I'm in. Like so far, this two like half of the movie is better than the entirety of that other one. Oh and, yeah, and I and I and I'm good and I'm good with it. So what's up, man? I, first of all, I loved hearing that that breakdown because I'm glad you got emotional because I got emotional, dude. The 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 amount of um, the amount of added drama, but like really like tangible drama. I don't I don't know how else to really express it, but like they the, yeah. there's these scenes we most of the most of them there's scenes that, of course that are completely new, which is awesome, but most of the scenes that already existed. It felt like it was my first time seeing these scenes to some degree. Yep. Like it's funny, I caught myself like actually reacting as if it was my first time even putting the story together. Even though I've seen this movie multiple times with the Whedon one, I know. like three or four times, <clears throat> um, and seeing the Snyder cut for the first time, I felt like I was experiencing the whole movie for the first time, completely new. I take back everything I've ever said. Like initially, when I was like, I don't think it will really change the movie that drastic. I I will be the first to admit I not, do not have too much pride to say I was dead wrong when I said that beforehand. Because um, you know, the Batman vs Superman, the Ultimate Edition, completely different movie, really yeah. awesome. But this one right here, like, wow, this is I'm 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 gonna reserve it because I still haven't finished it. You and I are at this exact same spot. Uh, I've got I'm at part four waiting to start part four, um, you know. So we're both stopped at the same area there. But um, Bro, assuming this continues this trajectory, this will be my favorite DC movie if if this continues on this trajectory. The, I, I'm my re- early reaction on it. The cyborg stuff. 
Wow. I, <laughs> I, that's another thing I got to apologize. Like, Ray Fisher deserves an apology because they did this dude dirty. They cut so much out on this guy. And that, and, and all those scenes was so were so good. Like, oh my goodness! But you need that backstory. And the yeah. Same thing, the same thing with every, every single thing. One of these scenes here really added to it. But um, the Flash and uh, um, and Cyborg, those two, like having their extended back, just just those little extra moments. It's it's not like they took so much time, but by having these moments, it just added so much more to these characters. Like you, I've been on the record saying that I I did not care for the portrayal of Flash that much. And it had to do with, I think, his he was just portrayed as just a quirky guy. And this, in the very small amounts that we have here, he's not just a quirky guy. He's a guy who's just he just has a very different personality, but he genuinely means well. And and, and he's other, and he's trying to find his way, right? He's trying to that, find his way. The conversation with his dad is like you know he's trying to find who he is. And I think he's acting. He's 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 reacting. Is what is right. what, what his character is doing is reacting to everything that's around him. Of course, he would be it, odd with all the things that he's been through in his life. Yeah. He's he's not. He's trying to find pieces. And and, and I, yeah. I get that you would have that before, but with with the weed and cut, and that's all we have to compare it to. Is like I, to me, all I took away from his character, he was the guy who who just stood there was like, I need friends, and it just came off very weird. You yeah. know, where in this, it came off more like, even the music in that whole scene is completely different. Yeah. You don't have these guitar, you know, going off or whatever. In the background, yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. have this epic, like, okay, I'm a part of something that's very important here. Let's come together. Talk about come together. So you, you all the scenes you mentioned, completely agree, amazing. But there's one particular scene that, again, the extension of it and the emotion of it, and that is seeing Darkseed and his minions and the new gods fighting against the old gods. That is, because I'm like, if these people were fighting to stop Darkseed from getting these mother boxes, it would have been the most epic war you have that the world has seen in. History. That scene was almost hundred percent different, dude. Like they... I, I think I think there's there's a couple of shots that they that they oh, yeah. used, but other than that, it was completely different because Darkseid's not in the other movie at all. Right. Right. At all. Right. I don't even think like and, the like those like the the monks that were controlling the mother boxes were in the movie. I even. think they were. I, you think but so? Very little. They're just, I remember there was like a shot of them, you know, doing their thing. Maybe. But, yeah. Jeez, but yeah, see, seeing <laughs> like seeing Ares, you know, yeah. being the one who cut. Like I love. Yeah, yeah. Like, like it's just, you know, the first people to charge were the Amazonians. Like all these little details were like so yeah. perfect, dude. Yeah, man. Oh, man, I just. I can't wait to, to finish it, dude. I cannot wait. I'm like, okay, so tomorrow I got uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah. And then I got this thing. Probably going to watch Falcon and the Winter Soldier at lunch and probably watch the end of this thing at night tomorrow or something. Yeah. Because it's just, I got to see both of them. But, man, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm filled with such good content. I hope that Falcon and the Soldier lives up because this weekend so far, it started off very well with, with this Snyder Cut. Joe, tell me, please tell me that there is going to be a physical release of this movie, please. I, with the black I and think, white, with like the both versions. Sense. Yeah. It only makes sense, right? Like, I don't, I think we'll have to wait a few months to a year because they they are using this to boost HBO Max, understandably. As a, as a business, I can't judge them on yeah. that. But at the same time, I would judge them as a business if they never put it on there because that would be the most ridiculous. Like it's kind of like it's kind of like the the Daredevil, like the Daredevil Netflix stuff. Like, dude, you know how much I I would want to buy that on Blu-ray, the Daredevil collection, dude. And they're not Loves Mando. I would I would buy Mando on Blu-ray. Mando. Yeah. Like you gotta sell this stuff. People like you know you you'll make money. you're missing out. But uh, yeah, I mean I know I say that and like. How many people actually buy physical copies? Yes, yes, I know the stats are against me. Most people don't have them, but still, I still think you'd have enough to move move them around. I think you, I, I'd be right there. They they would they would sell at least a couple of million for sure. Yeah, they, I think so. Oh yeah, come on. Yeah, at, at least. Um, very impressed. Very 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 impressed. Um, nothing negative to say about it. Like it's sweaty. Like I told, it's like so I'd send you a gift. I was like, this movie is like. <laughs> Yeah, it's ultra like ultra sweat. It's like ultra sweat. Like this is a He's got the omega symbol carved into his chest, dude. Yeah. Yeah. This is 
it's a uh, granny goodness to show up and all this bro <laughs> i'm i'm there for it yeah and and you can tell that um then right because we're we're basically uh based on 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 where we are on the movie right now right on the scenes that that we are right now we're only a you know a, a few moments away from from superman's return basically yes um yeah, so it's kind of like what I what I thought that that Superman was gonna be back in like the middle of the movie, and then, uh, and then it's gonna be like a prolonged battle sequence after that uh, with everyone. We still uh, got Deathstroke scenes. We still got you know Joker. Joker. Yeah, we haven't done any of the Nightmare stuff yet. Nope. It's so good, dude. I am very impressed. I was like, yeah. I mean, I I I was never an naysayer. I was. Uh, I, I always. Consistent. I, I always knew that that if this this version of the movie were to come, it would be a much superior version. And you did say that. And we. That is true. You know, and and we're we're looking at it. I, I see you, Disney. I see you. You do this with with Russ Skywalker. You, you 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 go and do that, because I know that there's like three different but, cuts of that movie. But do the fans want that as badly as these guys want the Snyder cut? They, I feel like Star Wars probably, fans just want something completely different right now. I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I think. I think Star Wars fans are are ready to move on. Yeah. Yeah. From uh, from the Mando stuff and and all that. So, um. Well, Joe, you know who's moved on? It's Chris Evans as Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, they asked uh, Kevin Feige directly if um, if if Chris Evans is going to be back as Captain America, uh, and and basically the answer was no. So uh, there was an inter- interview uh, with Entertainment Weekly, and uh, yeah, basically uh, Chris Evans is uh, out of the picture. Um, nothing's impossible. He may be back in some form, but he's probably not going to. But what I what I think he means here is that he's not going to carry a movie or carry a franchise or do anything like that. Like if he's back, he's gonna be in a much more uh, supportive role and not as a main character. Um, but yeah, dude, I wouldn't be surprised based on this because. I'm ver- like, there's usually whenever something comes from questionable sources, I'm very quick on the show to say like, I don't know how true this is, but I really believed this one um, because of the the outlets that were putting it out there about him coming back. Yeah. So to hear this come from Feige, I mean, when it comes from Feige, he, I don't think he's going to be lying to people. It just doesn't make sense. M- conspiracy theory time, try and fill in the gaps, uh, speculation. I'll say that probably when that article came out, Disney was probably talking to, to Chris Evans and and offering him something. Whatever happened, happened. Whether that's you know financial, whether that's he just said, "Nah, I don't think I want to come back to this." Whether there was a conflict of schedule, whatever it is, you could make your own theory on it. I get a feeling it was something that they wanted to do and it just didn't work out. So I think that's why um, Feige is putting this to rest by making it clear no. Because uh, he has been coy on things before whenever things are like possibly like we'll see or we never know. But when he's solid on stuff, he, he does tend to say like, no, it's not happening at all. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, yeah, sad. But at the same time, when you think about where they're going right now, the MCU, like it's understandable. Um, and I, I don't think. I don't think no today means no tomorrow, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like it's 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 like we talk about the Kathleen Kennedy thing, you know, it's like just because that he said they say that she's going to be here for years to come doesn't mean she will be here for years to come. You just don't know. I don't think there's plans to get rid of her. But the point being is things can change. This just, point. You just so, reminded yeah. me of something. Oh, oh, oh. No, 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 I just I just want to check on our on our guy to see if he's doing OK. Uh, oh. See if he has any uh, any new stories oh, about when are, Kathleen uh, Kennedy's going to leave Overlord uh no i th- i know overlord put out another video recently Dude, but i haven't I, watched him in a while don't even don't even it's getting crazy oh yeah there's a video from a day ago from mike zero 
Rise of Skywalker four hour cut is coming or it's yeah. It's not coming, dude. It's not. I, 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 I got I got wrecked by saying that uh, you know there was gonna be no Snyder cut coming out or whatever. Here we are years later. I'm rocking the shirt and the hat, having a great time. It could happen. I just I I, I won't believe it because he says it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I need I need it to come from some another another source to, to yeah. back him up. John Favreau so, just no, fired no, no Star Wars But I I e, sorry guys I. Yeah. I can't just believe that. Say, yeah, say, say, same, same as before. You know, basically yeah. like clickbaity articles about Kevin yeah. Kennedy. Uh, but yeah, man, it's. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, sorry to veer off on a Star Wars tangent every episode. We love Star Wars, come on, it's got, <laughs> it has to come. Up. Every episode is a mandatory Star Wars, <laughs> either update or a jab. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I know, I know, Chris, I know we'll see Chris Evans again eventually in something. So. Ass cap. I I even think Robert Downey will be back, dude. When I say back, oh, yeah. I don't think like I don't think like Iron Man. Maybe like you know, some type of work with his voice work or something. I wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Um, let's uh, circle back to the Snyder Cut. I just thought that that was a good transition. Uh, but it, it is it is holding up really well uh, on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, seventy seven percent on the Tomato Meter and ninety seven percent audience score. Um. I want to see. I want to see what the other Justice League was. Uh, Justice League. No. Is it even here? Oh yeah, it is here. <laughs> this is like the third one down. It's a, It was forty, and seventy one. So it's doing. It's doing way better than uh than that. So, uh, yeah. So good to see that that uh, uh, critics are um, reacting very positively to uh, the movie. Uh, Joel, do you want to talk about the uh, Geese and Gamers stuff? Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll touch on it lightly uh, um, here. Because I'm not like I was catching up, right? Like I was, I saw something this morning about it, um, but I really didn't dive in like i was like i said i was a universal day yesterday i really yeah. didn't watch any youtube at all yesterday so i was away from the youtube drama for a day which was refreshing uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> uh and then uh, and then this morning i saw something i ignored it uh as i was playing some spider-man and then uh then started watching some other stuff and then started watching the movie so um uh, but correct me if i'm wrong um uh, Basically, there was a uh, there was a charity stream uh, between several uh, YouTubers, and they invited Zack Snyder to be a part of it. Uh, the uh, proceeds were going to like uh, the suicide prevention hotline or something like that, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, and um, and Zack Snyder shows up in the stream, and before he talks, he gives. Which sounded to me like a very corporate uh, thing to say. Uh, Kevin Smith said something similar in one of his recent videos. Uh, and it was uh, uh, that they had uh, Geeks and Gamers uh, posted uh, as part of like the charity stream, right? And... Um, and they, they, and Zack Snyder said something to the nature of like, uh, we, I just want to put out there before, before I begin that we're not affiliated, uh, with gigs and gamers and we condemn like hatred and all this stuff. Right. Um, that's, that's the extent of it. That's, that's, that's what I got. Right. Cause I had the, when you texted me, when you told me that you wanted to talk about the topic today, um, then I was playing catch up at that time. Like I saw some that something had happened, but uh, go ahead and give us any details that we may be missing. And because I have opinions about uh, geeks and gamers, uh, you know, to various different extents. But go ahead, man. Yeah, no worries. Um, I mean, this whole thing I feel like has gone really. I think it's, up I think it's blown really up. Like, I think it's blown out of proportion. If you ask me. Yeah. But, yeah. Go ahead. I like. And I don't, without getting into it orig- like already, like I, we've we saw what happened with Star Wars Theory and Pablo Hidalgo, 
like this dude, like we submitted more. Someone like him, like you know, to me comes across as the kind of person who like does not want anything to do with drama. This thing here is the kind of people that there's there's YouTubers all around cashing in on. So I don't want to come across like oh we here are fifteen cents on these this whole situation because it feels like everybody's chiming in on it. I think to provide clarity though is it's that when Snyder started uh, allegedly because um, there was a whole Geeks and Gamers after um, reactionary live stream to Snyder's you know three sentences four okay, sentences so of there, there was yeah I wasn't aware there of was that. yeah okay so there was a whole reaction thing that they did all the the top people of Geeks and Gamers jumped on a thing just to talk about this and you know they started saying oh we've been slandered and defamed and all this different stuff um started <laughs> literally they literally made money on that stream is very like strange strange thing going on there but uh yeah i mean apparently uh one of the personalities of geeks and gamers that was on that stream i think the ones that was hosting it i uh, said that zach before they went live I actually got a call from warners um right before uh and, and uh so it's a it seems as if that they did kind of give them a direction of like hey we want to give you the heads up this is what's going on here Interestingly, though, um, he makes it he, – he instantly – like, it seemed like he definitely got a, a nudge, but he also took it a little bit further because he – not only does he say um, that we're not social geeks and gamers, and he says that, you know, there's a time of unity, and he says that, you know, we condemn acts of hatred, and he also mentions his, his – his, you know, that with what's, he goes, with what's been going on in the news recently, he says, I have, you know, children that I've adopted that are of Asian heritage – um like you he, he literally starts saying just saying this out of there on there um and says that you know like obviously like you know he's not happy with some of the events going on so don't want this to be a moment of unity and he goes i just want to get that out of the way before we get started and that's it i kind of took everybody by the blue uh you know by left field and just kind of started that way i don't necessarily think he did anything wrong by saying one i disassociate with these people and two, saying that he that he condemns something like that. It is it awkward, and is it is it something that like it makes you think instantly? Now, geeks and gamers just like <laughs> a part of a hate group or something, you know? You know, it does it does give you like like wait, what happened with geeks? Like, that was my first reaction. I was like, wait, did they say something about like the recent oh. events and hidden thing? I started looking back. It wasn't anything to do with no. that. It was just with their past history of their of their style of coverage. Um, yeah, that has seemingly aligned with certain. It could seem as if it aligns with certain ways of thinking, but that's, you know, that's also kind of reaching because it isn't exactly they're not yeah. going in your face and saying that we're associating with this, if that makes sense. Correct. Um, I think I think is that they're. Be personally, because I've, I've watched them for a while, I'm not subscribed, but every once in a while, whenever there's one a video that has a topic um, that uh, that I'm interested in, I would I would watch it. Um, and you know, when it, wherever they stand po politically, I really, I really don't care. I'm a very open-minded person. I have my political beliefs and I, th I believe that you are entitled to have your political and religious beliefs and I will fight for your right to have your opinions. Right. Um, you know, I, I've, there's been a few, a few times where it's like, ah, yeah, this is like a bit much and. It, it's sometimes it comes across a little bit a little bit disingenuous and not like completely honest it it's more like a character if you ask me at, at times right um and i think that um that combined with like uh i think the amount of like we're we are i think you and i both are are staunch critics of kathleen kennedy Till, till the end, right? Uh, but th there's a difference between being staunch critics like like you and I, and sometimes crossing that line, right? And I, I think agree. that's and I think that's part of it, you know. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, Kathleen Kennedy is a very powerful person in Hollywood. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah. and you know, crossing that line, I think that's kind of like because they've done it quite a few times you know that i've seen so and i and and they may ask oh what's crossing that line it's like well i mean there's not necessarily insults and whatnot hurled but there's you know 
comments and whatnot. Sure, you sure. Know? Again, I'm an open-minded person. I have thick skin, but at the same time, I, you know, would like to be respected, and I would like to address people with respect. You know, except you know, there's, there's exceptions. You know, <laughs> but sure, you know, there's always. You, you know, just come out left field. Something though. I learned when I worked at, when when I uh, started when I worked at Disney back in my in my in my original tenure at Disney. Something I learned from one of my trainers is like uh, everything that's etched in stone has its two or three exceptions. So yeah, it's like there's the two or three exceptions on that. Yeah, so um, I think that uh, he. You know, gave, geeks and gamers have been cre- they've cr- really criticized the the whole black Superman thing that came out a few weeks ago, um, and and I think that may have not seat well with, uh, with with Warner, which we talk about in the show, and to some extent I disagree, because I believe that you should give fans what they want, but that's just me, right? Um, that's fair. Uh, you know, it's nothing against the thing, right? It's like. It's like business choices, and yeah, uh, yeah. You actually have a fair, like you know, assessment of it. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, the and 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 that's the that's mostly the thing that I've seen uh, out of geeks and gamers that could be troubling. Um, I know that they, you know, also crossed the line with covering some of the Amber Heard stuff that happened and Johnny Depp. You know, agree to disagree in some things. Sure, and uh, you know I, I don't want to talk about that that case. I think I I have a, a strong opinion uh, on, on on that case, and I, and I do believe that there should be consequences for her. We'll just leave it there, uh, and you know I I just don't think I I don't it's not like they're like actively promoting hatred against people. Uh, I think it's just that the the, the way they cover yeah, the news, the tone. exactly. Um, they're they're a little they're a little bit like Fox Newsy, yeah. When they when they give the news, uh, like daytime Fox News. Correct. Yeah, and that's <laughs> not, not like prime time. <laughs> well, prime time is even worse. I think it's a totally different. Yeah, <laughs> the, the whole production changes on that that channel yeah. at night. Yeah, but I yeah I think I think that's the that's the thing, right? They. Uh, the way they they report and the way they address some of the you know topics, uh, they they do cross the line every once in a while, right? Um, yeah. Do they cover relevant stuff? Yes. Is there stuff well produced? Sure. You know, but you know, it's a uh, it's one of those things, right? It's a uh, I just think that there, it's like a CYA scenario for for them, right? Um, like I'm one, and and I'll and I'll admit it, right? Um, I I used to watch the quartering a lot, um, and and I didn't watch the quartering because of the political stances, right? I watched it because, uh, I I think that that again I I'm a very open minded minded on the individual, and I would you know like to hear different opinions and things, uh, but at the same time, uh, you know. I consider myself. I, I'm. I'm definitely liberal leaning when it comes to my political views, uh, but I, I'm not into the whole cancel culture stuff. I think it's stupid, and uh, you know, trying to cancel John Wayne when things he said on a Playboy interview in 1972, when the guy was already like like 108 years old and he was born like last century or whatever, and you know, it's 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 like that, right? Um, you know, there's at some point we as as humans need to stop being pansies and need to you know, uh, you know whatever happened to like sticks and stones, right? It's like I'm not gonna say everything about what's eh. happened. I think there's there's been some good revelations, but there's also has to be a self reflection. Correct. Too. But but I'll, I'll yeah. just say this about the the geeks and gamers guys is it's like. They have like to your point. They have a right to to say what they're saying. I think what they're saying, they're not trying to do something harmful. Um, but I would say that the, the tone that they've taken on some things is probably not the way I'd go about it. You and I try and be a little more level headed. Yeah. Like if you go to no load time, if you go to one of our episodes, right, 
I'm not trying to compare us against them because they have a right to do what they they're doing. And they're and a they're huge. Very, they're they're a very huge. successful. Yeah, like, they're very you know, successful. We, like so, like we I can I can only wish that we would be as successful yeah. as they are. Yeah. Yeah, like I totally totally respect it. But like if you you look up no load time, the art, the things you'll come up. A lot of times it's a lot of us talking about how hyped we are about this or or things that we're really enjoying and and and, and getting sweaty about like what new stuff is going on or whatever yeah. and d- taking a deeper dive and look at it. We're like, if you go to the front of the website, like the first thing is like Gina Carano fired by this. Why Kathleen? It's like, you're no, I've yeah. talked to you about this before, Obed, and I've mentioned it on the show. Like, do you ever want to be known in life for what you hate or what you love? Like is it, when somebody thinks of, you know, Joel, Joel, no low time, they think, Oh, this is the guy who's always talking negatively about this thing. I don't yeah. want to be known as that. No, absolutely I don't. Not. No, nope. I want to be known as like, oh yeah, Joel. Oh, he's probably talking about the latest this thing and how much he and this. And I want to hear their take on that. It doesn't mean everything's always sunshine and roses, but the point being yeah. is, it's like it's about our passions and our joy. And that's what unites us together. That's, exactly. that's why this is a safe sh- uh, place for fans to come together and just have a good time from different backgrounds and different perspectives. So yeah, yeah I mean, you know, I, I totally respect Zach for for what he said. I he probably was just a little misinformed, and I think. People yeah. maybe need to take a little bit of a seat, seat back and say, look, like if you, if you don't, instead of just talking online rashly, like, oh, he's not evoke and all this crazy, all these things, people start saying all these names and all this. Like, personally, I think that's you're just using at that point just to to get um, more popularity to your channel versus like, you know, do you really know where where he came from? And even on that stream with with him they then like some of the, pe- the other people on there started then making fun of other youtubers it, it just I, like with him on there and it just it didn't sit right with me yeah um so you know i i i, I don't think that's the way it should should have gone down but you know i think there's probably some misunderstanding there so uh, basic gist of it everybody's listening because some of you might be like wait what really happened in the situation zach makes this disclaimer uh it rubbed geese and gamers wrong because they're doing a charity event. They literally raised fifty thousand dollars for this guy's yeah. charity that at that moment, and then he's saying I di- I disassociate with them. <laughs> so the people got people got very very emotionally uh, triggered, understandably. Yeah. Um, and I I see where geese and gamers come from, but at the same time, geeks and gamers like guys, you're just not you can't pretend like you're playing nice with everybody. And when somebody makes yeah. a statement like this, you know you're not you can't be surprised. Um, I just think there needs to be a little bit calm down and peace and cool um yeah yeah that's all yeah and like like what you said you know we we've uh what we cover here is is things we love right um we we couldn't cover disagreements because we've we we cover kathleen kennedy because we love star wars right that's the thing and that's you know it, we we cannot cover the one thing without the other um and, and i think we've for the most part done a a decent job at, at that and, and you know keeping it, keeping it positive yeah we can you know we we can have our criticism here and there uh but at the end of the day you know we are talking about things we love uh and it's different to talk about something that you love you can love star wars right um and uh, it always brings me back to the um um ah the documentary about the the prequels uh with george lucas Oh, people versus people, George Lucas. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go Always on. bring me back to that. It's like, I mean, you can love Star Wars, right? Um, because I'm an old school Star Wars fan, but yeah, you know, this whole like George Lucas ruined my childhood when the prequels come out. I was like, no, that's stupid. It's like that. Like I didn't even say that back in '99 when when Phantom Menace came out. I was like, I want to see Phantom Menace, dude. I still my somewhere in the back there yeah. is the VHS collector's edition for that awesome. movie. You know, come on. It, 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 my childhood was not ruined. <laughs> come on. There's there's much worse things that can happen to you that can ruin your ho- yeah. childhood other than Jar Jar Binks. Come on. It's like, it's like it doesn't even yeah. make sense. Uh, but yeah, I mean, tone it Strong down. Speed. You know, tone it ga- down, guys. It's like, tone it down a little bit. You, you'll go, You'll go places, you know. Again. Uh, they are a, a very successful, uh, you know, YouTube channel, and we can we can only hope to be uh, as uh, as big as they are with, with how long we've been doing this. <laughs> Much respect to those guys. Much Absolutely, respect. I mean they they hustled, and uh, you know the thing is that you know it, you gotta sometimes you just say things in a 
in a way that uh you know it, it could come come out uh, a little bit uh, rough on the other end but so. that's the thing dude controversy gets ratings and they, they know it yeah so. oh, absolutely sure. yeah controversy it. gets all clicks the new, all the news stations know yeah. it i mean it's the same thing like like we're like super like dude it's like we're not even we're, we're so not clickbaity that i use the same picture for all the videos on youtube <laughs> it's right. like we're Why never easily photoshop some crazy things? we're never face palming we're never we never have like big crazy letters it's like you know, if you watch it, you watch it. You watch it for the content. You don't watch it for the drama. You know, wow. uh, and yeah. and that's that's my way of thinking. Is like we may not be successful, but you know, but we we're keep, but we're having a good time when yeah. we 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 have our conscience clean. So we're good. We're good. Someone goes back and looks at our, these videos ten years from now, still gonna realize the kind of people we are, right? So we hope exactly, for. exactly, absolutely. Uh, Joel, we got a. Uh, we're going a little bit over, but it's okay. We got a, a few uh, very important video game yes. news. Uh, yes. The first one that I really want to talk about is that uh, PlayStation bought Eva. Dude, dude, where did this come from? Um, it is. It, it, there are they. I mean, to my knowledge, right? They're the. They're the first major uh, console manufacturer that actually owns a piece of esports right now, right? Uh, yeah, only... I don't think anyone else does. Yeah. Um, and this is amazing. And especially, like, the kind of esports that I like. Like, it's fighting right. games. So, this is like, to me, this is like a match made in Street Fighter Heaven. And and I am, I am 100% on board. And I, you know... I really do look forward to what they have to bring. Uh, they did say that they will have events coming out this year. Um, I believe that I read somewhere that there was a uh, there was already uh, yeah there we go to be held digitally uh, August sixth through the eighth uh, and uh, and then August thirteenth through the fifteenth. Uh, the events will include Tekken Seven, Street Fighter Five, Mortal Kombat, and uh, Guilty Gear Strive. So yeah, man. So just hearing this, like Evo was already doing just fine. They're, they're a massive well, success. Well, here's the thing, right? I think that Evo was doing fine until the the pandemic hit. And then, oh yeah, and that's then they, true. I think they were just not in a good place. Well, first of all, like last year we had the issue. Was it last year or the year before with uh, Joey Cuellar where? Like there was that thing with that yeah. dude twenty years ago, and the dude was a minor. So yeah. stuff that happened a long time ago that that resurfaced, and then that kind of yeah. affected Evo. But then the then the pandemic hit, and they had to cancel everything. Like what happens really wasn't it wasn't really Evo's fault. It just you know in cir unfortunate circumstances. But looking at like just looking at this announcement, it's like PlayStation just adopted a brand that's already like it's not even it's it. It's not at its peak, but it's already in a very good place. It was in, so, yeah. So it's gonna be taken now, just crazy next level. Play, PlayStation, Sony, they're in this to win. Um, this is a huge acquisition. They clearly knew that they could catch. I think they could. They caught most of the industry by surprise with this news today. Um, yeah. You know, I, I think this was pretty pretty huge, um, and I I look forward to seeing how they integrate the entire um, tournaments with. The PlayStation brand, like clearly, there's going to be other things there. Nintendo's already made some comments on it. They're yeah. going to these people now have to pay PlayStation. Good for them, but I'm sure that also just generally, like, PlayStation is about the hype, dude. Like, I mean, they're they're, they're going to bring some very good shows co going forward. So, I think this I just is a, can't wait yeah. to sit back and be surprised more. Yeah, um, and I think the last few Evos, um, <clears throat> not necessarily. I mean, the the last year though it was canceled, but the year before, like every Evo, we get like reveals and surprises and all this stuff. Uh, and I think that this is a place where Sony can really sh show uh, this sort of stuff happening, right? Uh, and based on the partnership that uh, Sony and Marvel have with Spider Man and and some of the other stuff, you know, the the uh, close partnership with the, between Sony and Disney, um, they could even you know, make a new Marvel versus Capcom happen 
Um, oh yeah. You know, now that uh, that infinite basically just died <laughs> in the middle of nowhere, it was completely abandoned. It's like it died of starvation and uh, just just left there to rot. Unfortunately, uh, they uh, they they should have definitely uh, updated that game. Uh, you know, throw in some graphics shaders, add more characters, and that would have been good because the that game had really good online play. It it played very. It was fun to play. Uh, so it, it was unfortunate. Um, I'm looking forward to what they are really going to bring. Um, I, I think I want to pre-order Guilty Gear, man. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm close. I don't know. I, I, I may do it because it looks, it looks so good. And I mean, I played a little bit of it. And it was fantastic. So, um, I may, I may just get back into fighting games, uh, just for just, just even for a little bit. I don't know. Hopefully. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. Uh, but I am very excited. Very excited. Um, uh, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, yeah, Nintendo said that it's like uh, they asked them about Smash and they said, I was like, well, that's up to Nintendo. If they want to bring it, we'll have them, right? And I'm assuming that if Microsoft approaches them, it's like, hey, how about bringing back Killer Instinct and putting back an Evo? It was like, sure, why not? I'm sure that they'll they'll be open. Yeah, they'll play nice. Yeah. Um. Now with this happening, um, I wonder how. So so because Evo is like the the culmination of different of several different events throughout the year. Uh, I mean that that's how it used to be back uh, before the pandemic, and I'm sure that one day we'll get back to that point. Um, what would happen? Like I I what I'm interesting uh, interested in seeing how this will affect like. Uh, like, like the Capcom Pro Tour and CEO and all these other events, uh, you know, uh, first attack and all this other stuff that happens, uh, throughout the year, um, you know, DreamHack and I, I don't know all these other events, fighting game events that happen. So, I'm 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 wondering how this is going to either affect or maybe complement those events. So yeah, we'll see. It's gonna be interesting. And it's pretty cool, man. Yeah. Uh, Joel, a few announcements from uh, Square Enix today. They had a uh, little presentation in the morning. Uh, the uh, Project Athia that was uh, confirmed to be a, a PS5 and PC game uh, back when it was announced got a title. Uh, uh, it's for Spoken. Uh, and uh, it looks very good. Uh, they're saying it's going to be a 2022 release. Uh, it looks like an open world, uh, like action fantasy game, and it looks it looks pretty good. Uh, they announced that uh, there's going to be a, a Black Panther expansion for the Avengers game. They also announced the Avengers update for PS5 and how that's going to work and all, and all that. So, uh, Joel, this would be probably a good time for you to jump in if you want to jump into that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the, there's uh, even rumors I know around potentially down the line them adding a Spider-Man expansion as well for this Avengers game. So they're still trying to find ways to, to make money off this. And I, I do want to pick it up. Someone else brought to my attention. I think this week they already have they already have the price on sale or something like that, like the, the game's on sale it's or something cheap, like that yeah. right now. Already it was cheap, and then they put down. Yeah, I keep feeling like this is going to be one of those, like, throwing games on black friday this year it's going to be like mm. you know what i mean like one of those like seven nine dollar eight dollar game you know what i mean <laughs> like like game there's dude there's games like that like like god of war or whatever that's like eight nine dollars you know like this yeah. is a great game so i i don't know i feel like this this has got to drop down even more but yeah yeah i would still like to play it i don't know about you man but i'd still like to play it yeah i i, I mean there's other things that i want to play Same. um so I mean I may I may give it a try eventually I don't know if it goes free to play I'll try it. Yes, same. Yeah, that's, I know that's free is for sure. Free is good. <laughs> uh, Life is Strange is getting a uh, another game. Uh, Life is Strange True Colors uh, coming out uh, this fall. Uh, they show a little bit of the uh, you know Hawkeye uh, missions that they're going to release again for Avengers. Uh, showed another trailer for Outriders, uh, and they uh, talked about the uh, 25th anniversary of uh, Tomb Raider. And if I'm not wrong, the only thing that they announced is a definitive Survivor trilogy. 
uh, mm. that is uh, basically all three games, uh, all three Tomb Raider games in one package, which I already own all three on PS4, two on PS Plus, and the first one I think was like four dollars on one of those crazy sales that they do, uh, one of those flash sales. So um, they announced a bunch of uh, mobile stuff that I'm not interested in. Uh, Bell and Wonder World, they show up. Uh, they showed a new co-op uh, trailer, so the game will have local co-op as well. And uh, that is basically what they announced. Uh, no Final Fantasy 16 news, uh, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, but things are, are moving along and things are happening, so we'll see what, uh, what other announcements we'll get around summertime. Yeah, I agree. More to come. Yep. Uh, Joel, last bit of news that I have here, uh, there is a new PlayStation program uh, coming out on uh, March 25th, and uh, they are calling it the Play at Home 2021 program, and basically they're giving you a bunch of games for sort of free. Which is the same that they did with the Ratchet and Clank. That was also the Play at Home yep. program. Um, or you're getting Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition. Hey. Heck yeah, dude! Because <laughs> you were talking, we were talking about it like last week, right? I know. And you wanted to play it. Now's your chance. No like, excuse. Like now, I'm assuming that uh, you know this probably will have. Uh, you know, I- I'm assuming that there's going to be a patch coming for this game soon. I think so too. Um, because you you know you just don't one does not simply throw Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, and uh. And not patch it. Um, I mean, there's you can still play PS Pro for uh, PS4 <laughs> PS4 Pro version of the game. Uh, I like, which I'm sure is cool. Yeah, it's 1080, 1080 to 60 or 4K 30, so it's up to you. But that PS5 performance, if they can do it, it's got to be 60 4K. I'm sure if they did it for God oh, they, of War, I mean, and 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 yeah, and Ghost, yeah, yeah, they can do it. Yeah, they they definitely can. So, uh, so we'll see how that goes. But in addition, uh, you will have Absu, Enter the Gungeon, uh, Res Infinite, and that is a really good game. Yep. Really, really good game. Uh, Subnautica, The Witness, which is another really good game. Fantastic. Yep. Uh, Astrobot Rescue Mission. Uh, so you're getting another Astrobot game. Moss, which is a PlayStation VR game. Astrobot is VR as well. Yep. Uh, Thumper. Uh, another VR game. Uh, I think you can play it without B- VR and uh, Paper Beast, uh, which was announced uh, for PS4, I believe, last year. Um, Joel, um, I'll, one bit of news that I don't have here that I'll just I'll just drop in here. Uh, did you see the the new PSVR controllers? Yes, I saw it today. I think it was yep. when it went out, right? Yeah, because yeah. it came out this morning. They they. Yep. Uh, had a press release showing the new uh, PSVR controllers, which look more like the like the Oculus controllers, and they're definitely a welcome upgrade to to yeah, VR. They look they look a, very comfortable. They do. Yep. So they wrap around. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they do look like they both have they you know both two analog sticks and buttons on on each hand. You don't need to depend on the ones anymore and uh, all that tracking thing. So, <clears throat> I'm hoping to see the headset. What do you think? Late summer, maybe they'll show the headset. Yeah, because that's gonna come out this year. If it's gonna be fall, I think E3 timeline ish online E3. Yeah. I don't was know. Was it was it this year or was it like 2022? I thought it was this year, but I could be wrong. I think I think they they said that they were gunning for they were shooting for it, but they may not make it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And okay. I think they <clears throat> they probably won't make it because of. Uh, People not being able to get PS fives. So. <laughs> yeah, right. Although that's it, getting a lot better now. It's today it's, there is more people getting yep. them, so it's that's a good sign. Yeah, and multiple retailers, not just Walmart, not just Amazon. So how many months is this? this is what five months? Yeah, so five months. Wow, it's nuts. Still dude. can't walk into a store and grab one. That's crazy, dude. dude I got scared this morning, <clears throat> so I was playing Spider Man. They started making a weird sound, like. <clears throat> I was like, Ooh. no, oh. and it was the disc that started spinning, and I guess it started spinning in a weird way, and it started making a weird sound. 
And I freaked out, bro. Freaked out. And then I stopped. I was like, I paused it. Took my headphones off. I was like, what the heck, bro? What's going on? And then, and then he just stopped. It's like, okay, so it was the disc spinning. And then, then I didn't do it again. I was like, okay, so I'm good. I'm good. All right. I think. <laughs> well, we'll see. Uh, I, I, want, so. I, I wonder how Sony's uh, managing warranty stuff. Like if it's past uh, the year, if yeah. you pay. I mean, we're not past the year yet, right? But No, no. But if they do get to that point. Correct. Yeah. So we'll yeah, see. Yeah, that is all we got, sir. Uh, we did go yes, over a few minutes, but uh, it was fun nonetheless. For if sure. If you want to just go ahead, plug us in, and uh, hit the road. Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to have sweet sleep now because it's, <laughs> it's pretty late at night we're recording this. But uh, guys, gentlemen, ladies, all good people here at No Low Time, thank you for checking us out. Uh, we ask you to please stay connected, stay subscribed. Subscribe to our podcast on podcast platforms. We're on iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, Spotify, Amazon Music. We're out there. We're also on our on YouTube channel as well. So subscribe there as well. Make sure you're following us on our social media. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitch. At No Load Time. That's at No Load Time. We hope you follow us there and stay up to date. And in addition to that, we welcome feedback, questions, comments. We'd love to hear from you. Send an email to noloadtime at gmail.com. That's noloadtime at gmail.com. We'd love to hear back from you all. Thank you for staying with us, and we'll see you on our very next episode. Thank you, guys. Stay safe. We'll see you again next time.